Welcome to No Match for a Blaster, a Star Wars role-playing podcast. Season 2, Episode 28, Old Wounds. I'm your temporary host and squire of Ren, Bobby Adney. If you're new here, No Match for a Blaster is an actual play podcast featuring the Morality Plays crew playing the Star Wars role-playing system by Fantasy Flight Games. Now, it's time to thank our Nerf Herder of the Week, David Ruth, and our Blaster Head of the Week, Liz Beatty. At this level, our patrons get access to our exclusive Patreon feed to listen to our episodes days early. Plus, David will get to name his own NPC on our show. Thank you, patrons. To be our next Blaster Head or Nerf Herder of the Week, be sure to subscribe to us on Patreon at patreon.com slash morality We have a question for all you out there in Star Radio Land. With Disney's upcoming animated show The Resistance and live-action series The Mandalorian, what other parts of the Star Wars universe are you hoping to see come to the screen? Obi-Wan's adventures on Tatooine? Or maybe the workplace romantic comedy starting your favorite assassin droid IG-88? Let us know on our Facebook at No Match for a Blaster, or tweet us at morality underscore plays. Also, if you're enjoying our story so far, please don't forget to leave us a review on iTunes. So, get your road trip snacks ready, because we're returning to the crew of the Atheon, as they're starting their journey back to Julius Station. Open, Moff Spozak's intelligence log. After successfully looting the ancient research station on Nalidus for any parts and information they deemed useful, the crew of the Atheon must return to Julius Station where they will complete their deal with Ushal Mortov. But first, the crew must evaluate what they have learned, and assess the damage they have taken as a result of their expeditions. Close intelligence log. Welcome back! Hey everybody. Hi! You guys You guys looted a, a place. Uh, you guys, crap out of a place. from top to bottom, everything. No, there, was, there was no crap left. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so you, you packed up the Atheon, you moseyed over... Shab. There was no Shab left. There's no Shab left. You moseyed over back to the Julia Station. Uh, you guys have landed back in the Julia Station hangar bay. Um, I'll spare you all from me describing my favorite location I've made up so far, the Blue Star Space Station. I, I just am imagining, like, on the pilot controls, like, the, the big hyperspace, uh, what was it, it's like, handle that you push forward. Mm-hmm, the like hat, the, for, Yeah, the throttle. The, like, <laughs> just, like, a, a quarter inch up from the bottom of the throttle, there's there's Mosey. <laughs> um, it's, That's it. There is, but uh-huh. um, Kamaya wrote it there in Sharpie. Yeah. Ah, and she's got her feet up on the dashboard again. Yeah. The lowest uh, I did want to do is... something before we went back to Julius, though. Oh, you did? Or, like, before we got back to Julius. What's, what's that? Well, I was going to go and talk to Remy while you we're... You want a dramatic scene? Well, we're fine, yeah. Fine. Yeah. Go ahead and do a dramatic <laughs> scene. But first, because no one remembered. Fourth, fourth <laughs> oh, that's, that's low, sir. That's, <laughs> the power of editing. <laughs> <laughs> did you clear the pool? I have not. Ha-ha! <laughs> 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 Because uh, someone didn't clear the pool. Clear the, clear the so pool. don't swim. Clear so we have six light side and four dark side? So. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> light side. One dark side. Two light side. I feel like I haven't rolled a light side in a while. <laughs> uh, probably, it probably doesn't reflect your character. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Taking a moment. Well, as far I'm still wanted to run tests on everybody, like like algebra, SAT I think scores. Remy had said he he would, yeah, 
Yeah, but you fun. wouldn't get into the back to tag. Unless you saw that, some I reason for was, me to. Yeah. Oh, I rolled I the dark side. Do this. So I believe, if my math is correct, we have... Wait. Three, three and two. Three, three light side, two dark side? Mm-hmm. Why is it showing up wrong then? Two dark That's side. a very good question. Force actually. player update. All right. There it is. Is it good? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So, so as the Atheon is traveling back to the Julius Space Station to, uh, to complete your contract, and I'm going to dodge a shopping episode with everything I have in me, Kamaya um, goes to talk to Remy. Yeah. Where is Remy? Where is he hanging He's out? As probably Remy? getting a scan in the med bay. So she waits until he's done. Oh, you, got, you, got, you, got see, like, you don't want to include me in the scene. I see how it is. <laughs> Kamaya doesn't want to include you in the scene. I mean, so do we need to do that as well? Let me see. Let me see. Check here. I yeah, you can do a check. You can do a medical check, but I, I don't have any wounds. So oh, there was actually a thing actually, that I asked you guys wounds. to remind me of at the end of last session. Yeah, you got, yeah yeah yeah. You guys are supposed to remind me. Um. Uh. Yeah. S four was doing a full body scan of everybody. Right. Yes. And I said, "Well, he hold said that. he was going to." Yeah. And I said, "Hold that thought. We'll do that at the beginning of the next session." Great. So that's what we're doing. Perfect. You're doing a full spectrum body scan, right? Yes. I'd like to do a full workup on everybody because Please my meat bags you. are malfunctioning. <laughs> Please get the spares. This would be hilarious. Um, uh, what's the difficulty on this? Uh, difficulty is roll? going to be... Um, it's actually going to be one red, one purple, and a black. One of every color. Yay! Yay. Uh, I have my new upgraded medical suite. May I have a blue die? Yes, you may. Alright. And boop. One success, three advantages. Okay. Who was that for? That's for you. Okay. Kamaya got out of it for at least the first bit because she was flying. What with having to fly? Yes. What with being the pilot and all? (laughs) So, you do the whole full body scan on Remy, right? Yeah, there's a butt tattoo. There's a butt tattoo. Um... It says, have a nice day. And you, you, you know, you find normal things. He has, like, you know, uh, a a small latent space version of, uh, you know, uh, like tuberculosis. It's it's probably never going to flare up too much. But it's, you know, it's a good Western-y disease. So he has a little of that somewhere. Um, Star TB. Yeah, Star TB. Um, but what you do find, which is very uh, surprising, is you find three different um, cybernetics in his body. Bah, humbug! <laughs> <laughs> if you no- dirty rotten rouse of frass and rick of frass. If you <laughs> notice, <laughs> if you notice the difficulty of your scan, the reason is because you found an They're anomaly. Well And you actually had to scan certain sections three different times just to pierce down low enough to actually find find it. It's just that is not how cybernetics usually work. If you get it, usually it's something cool, badass, and you want to show it off. Right. These are under a a a pretty thin layer of this material we're not really you're not familiar with that was masking the the, the the cybernetics. Yeah. Where are the cybernetics? What Uh, do they do? So he has one in his in his in his bicep. Uh, you want uh-huh. your left arm or right arm? I don't care. All right, his his left arm. He has a, like his his bicep is is uh is mostly Enhanced. cybernetic. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You not sure of any additional functionality there? There is a plate and section uh on the back right side of his head, and actually at his hip. You're not able to really discern functionality. Uh, huh. Captain, have you been holding out on me? I turn I turn the screen around so he can see that I now see the cybernetics. What am I looking at? 
These are cybernetic implants, Captain. I don't remember telling you to put those implants in. <laughs> I <laughs> agree. I do not remember you telling me to put them in, nor do I remember putting them in. These look like they've been here for quite some time, Captain. Look at the scarring. Hmm. Imp crawls on your shoulder and, like, pecks at your bicep. I, like, flex it back and forth to see if, like, just, you know. I, I, but I don't notice anything. Hmm. Seems to be working fine. The craftsmanship looks uh, impeccable. All right, Captain. Well, if you don't want to discuss it, that's your prerogative, and I turn the screen back around. Everything seems to be functioning normally, Captain. Great. Thank you. Uh, and Rumi kind of scratches the back right side of his head. Hmm. <laughs> yes, Captain? Nothing. I just, uh, I don't know. Just didn't know there was one back there either. Are you attempting to explain to me that you didn't know you had these three cybernetic implants, Captain? Well, yeah. Uh, say that again, please, Captain. And I, all all of the sensors narrow down on facial features. I I I believe he is lying to me. <laughs> Ooh, player versus player roll. Okay. Uh, I don't know. We don't have to roll it. It's fine. Ah, uh, okay. Well, yeah. I see, Captain, and I store that data for later. Well, I'm not sure as to their functionality, uh, but. You do have three cybernetic implants, Captain. These are excellent quality and have been very carefully masked so that they can't normally be spotted. If I hadn't been doing such a deep scan of all of your systems, I probably would not have seen it. Okay. Any idea what they're for? Well, I could try to investigate further, but uh, I don't have all the proper pieces of equipment in this particular lab. I would need a larger medical setup and more diagnostic tools. But something like that we could do back on either the station or Hoban. Mm. Or you could simply ask your handlers, uh, since I believe that's what you used to do. Uh, perhaps they know something about this. Yeah, maybe. Um... I mean, but you oh, look, said they've been there a long time. New Republic time symbol and... stamped on every... No. <laughs> <laughs> they've been there a while, and you said, uh... Right? And, I mean... It all seems to be working well, fine. Well, have been here noticed. for some time, Captain, yes. Hey, guys, this is how Spozek knows everything. <laughs> <laughs> See, personally, I think it's Imp, but... <laughs> It's been Remy all along. It's been Remy all along. It's been the spy. We never would have figured it out. Next, we'll figure out the butler did it. Okay, but everything else, uh, no other problems, right? Unfortunately, I was not able to find anything wrong with you, Captain. Remy kind of looks confused a minute, and then he's like, well, Okay, nothing's wrong. All right. Next. Well, uh, yeah, I'll send Kamaya in when she gets a minute. As as you, you as you don't tell him about the Star TV. Uh, okay, so I will. I'll make my way up to the cockpit and. Yeah. Do you run into Kamaya heading back or thud? No, Kamaya. Kamaya will be there. <laughs> oh. Um, I think like. Hey, Kamaya. <laughs> we really should turn these lights back off. <laughs> Um, yeah, she'll be in the, she'll be in the cockpit. Um, I think, so I actually do have some wounds and they're from when I got force thrown back cause I was where, cause I was holding the weapon. Mm -hmm. Um, so I assume that she is actually a little bit hurt. Um, so this time she has her foot up, but like, because it's actually hurt. <laughs> so, um, so it's like, like her foot's a little bit swollen or something. Um, 
because she landed on her feet, so I'm imagining it just kind of hurt her a little bit. Um, uh, so she's sitting there, and she seems kind of distracted, staring through the windshield at the blue streaks of hyperspace. Uh, he'll come up <clears throat> to the cockpit and... All right, Kamai, it's your turn when you get a chance. She kind of jumps. Oh, hey. Hey, Remy. Um, yeah, I guess in a minute. Hey, can I talk to you? Sure, what's going on? I don't know. I just saw a lot of things back in there, and I know I know you saw some stuff too. And S4 thinks we're crazy. But, like... Well, yeah, but it was pretty clear to me, at least, that, uh... That Jedi, or whatever that thing was, was trying to communicate with us a little bit. Exactly. It it was all real. Well, sort of. Well, I don't... You, right, I don't know how real it was or not, but... What we saw I mean, was... it wasn't just in our heads. It was... There was something there. I saw... Again, I mean, they were... Well, again, I, I, like I said, I don't know how much of what we saw was real or not. It's kind of hard to distinguish that. But I think it was coming from whatever was left of the Jedi. Was He was... I think, sending those images to us. I saw my old wingmate, and I think he's alive. I I think I really saw him where he was. I, I wasn't sure before. I thought maybe he was, he was in the Hosnian system when everything happened. I, I thought he was. He was still working for the defense force and I think he's alive somewhere okay you, you said something about going to a planet you you thought it was important and I believe you and I, I think we should but when we get a, a moment I I want to go find him too Okay. We can um, do that. I I saw something. Um she pulls up like um she pulls up like a data pad and draws on it. Um you know, she pulls up the paint app. <laughs> and she drew, <laughs> and she draws the symbol that she saw um the bird on the yellow background. Do you this this is familiar but I've I can't place it. Have you ever seen this symbol before? Hmm. Ido, have I seen it? Ooh, that bit is a knowledge outer rim, which I, I really hope is a real skill. I think <laughs> it is. is. <laughs> Let me see if I have any bonuses to that. Um. Well, if I had another 25 points, I could buy a skill <laughs> for that, but I don't, <laughs> so... Let's see. Knowledge Outer Rim. Let me see. Skills. Knowledge is... And what difficulty? Knowledge Outer Rim is a skill. Uh, what it's going to be... It's going to be hard with a blue die. So that is <clears throat> two purple, right? Uh, three. Okay. Oh, two successes and all the threats. Yeah. Well, five. You know where it is. It's a bad place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Teddy Bear Junction. <laughs> We're a scum hole in the galaxy. <laughs> so, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's the symbol for a crime syndicate out towards the... Uh, the outer edge. Um, they 
They're not quite like huts. Huts are more business-like. And Yellow Sun is more... Yellow Sun, right? That's what they're called? Or am I, think, am I mixing up my... my... I think you're thinking of Black Sun. Black Sun, yeah. Black Sun tends to be like more of like a Blackwater kind of um, military-esque. Um, <clears throat> this crime syndicate is a little more cutthroat and backstabby, small operations that are very vicious. Um, they tend to have a lot of specialists. Um, they More of like a mercenary group. Uh, kind of. They're, they're almost like, if you were to take like a thieves guild, almost. You know, the very small cells. They don't operate all as one, but, you know. Um, okay. The name is the Dracker clan. Dracker? Dracker. Dracker. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think I've seen this before. This is, uh, I think this is the symbol for the Dracker clan. A smaller, yeah, smaller uh, crime syndicate, sort of, that are more on the outer rim. They kind of aren't very, like, involved with business so much as kind of independent, um, specialized individuals. For hire type so, of thing, more okay. thieves guild. So or... you know where they operate. She like she pulls up a, a galaxy map. There, because we're in the cockpit. There's absolutely oh yeah. There's a big like there's there's a good like few systems that they operate in, but it's hard to ever pin down. They if they do a job in a place, it's terrible, vicious. Not a lot of people came out alive, and then they're not there for a while. So they don't have they don't have turf, which is okay. that, that's probably why they don't bump into problems with the huts or the black sun or with the the pirates is they don't try and own territory they just operate loosely. But there's there's like a few systems you can you can kind of generalize. Okay. Um. Yeah. Generally, they kind of like I said stay kind of more on the outer rim. In a few different systems, but for the most part, they don't have territory exactly. They kind of move into an area, and then it's a big bloody mess, and they kind of leave and let the dust settle. So they don't really operate in one system or planet specifically so much as move around and try not to run afoul of the huts or pirates or anybody else, but... Well, I mean, unless they're paid to, unless that's the point of why they're okay. uh, why they're there. But they're in this area. Well, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, she starts to kind of go through the planets, and um, she's looking for ones that are like like get colder. Where I saw him, it was it was snowing. Um, it looked freezing. Got to be someplace cold. Okay. Um. Was he by himself, or was he in a city? Was it a group? Um. It didn't. It didn't look like a city. I didn't see anyone else, though. Um. He had a speeder. It had the symbol. The speeder had the symbol. Yeah. But he wasn't wearing. The symbol that you could see? The he wasn't right, you know? Mm-mm. No, he was, he was bundled up. Um, this group can be pretty dangerous. Just, just throwing it out there. It's all the more reason for me to find him. He had cybernetics that I didn't see on him before. Yeah, that's kind of going around. <laughs> What? Uh, nothing. Okay. Um. Something might have happened to him while he was there, or maybe around the time that that First Order attack happened. I don't know. I haven't seen him in a while. But 
Um, you know, how much narrowing down can I do about, like, finding a planet that's, you know, that's the right climate? On average, each system will have at least one planet that could fit that kind of description. Um, mm -hmm. You didn't see any landmarks. You didn't see any kind of, uh, like, buildings or anything on the planet. So, really, any rim planet of any of those systems could have been it. There are definitely some... You could probably narrow it down to, like, if you had to guess, maybe three of them that you'd have to put feet down onto that have enough of a population that they could have a job. But really, there's a lot. Okay. Um, she starts, uh, she starts marking some. She, she puts a little, a little mark on each of them. Um, Anything else you could, to go on? Maybe. Yeah. Um, I don't know. New cybernetics, so he was hurt at number some point. Number of suns, number of moons. I, nothing? I couldn't, I couldn't see them. I was, I was there for a moment, and... I saw the snow, and I, I didn't see any landmarks. I didn't see any buildings. I didn't see any other people. I just saw him. Mm. And that's that's all I've got. Yeah, not much to go on, is it? No. I think if okay. I started kicking up dirt around this crime syndicate would they rab it or would they come find me well they can be a bit unpredictable so it's hard to know and uh, you don't know for sure that your friend is with them only that he was driving a speeder with their markings on it so even asking around about him in reference to them could be a bad idea yeah, I guess so. But knowing that he was in that area, that he has some kind of thing connecting him to them, that's that's all I've got to go on. Well, that may be enough. We'll um we'll get in touch with some intelligence people and see if they've heard any movements or any rumors uh, regarding the drug hour. Uh, she gives you, like, a tight little smile and kind of, uh, and squeezes your shoulder and, thanks, Remy. Sure. It's, means a lot. What, no problem. Did you, did you see anything weird besides going to this planet? I know there was a lot going on down there. Are you Okay. Yeah, I'm good. It's, it was a little unsettling, I'm not going to lie to you. But, um, yeah. yeah, I'm good. I think we need to just try and get the pieces together that we can to at least stand a chance against this Sith Lord. And uh, go from there. Yeah, we're going to have to. This battle's happening soon, and if we don't have a way to win it, I I don't know what's going to happen. The defense force is real weak right now. We don't have a lot to go on. But at least we have a lead, right? It's better than nothing. Yeah. So, what? Back to Julius. Unload some stuff. Damn it, Rico. Mama's trying to be dramatic. And she's been doing a great job. Mama's being real dramatic here. So, what? We go back to Julius. Unload some cargo. Get in touch with the defense force and head out to this other place the the one that you saw in the last vision uh yeah 
Okay. I hope you've got some, hope you have some more leads on where specifically to look. That's, it's a pretty big place. Um, yeah, I mean, just the, uh, like I said, just uh, looked like kind of like a temple, you know, kind of pyramid in shape. And I mean, there can't be that many of those buildings around. <laughs> because he said that it's going to be yep. all like, that's just going to be the style of building. <laughs> Everything is going to be pyramid. How hard is it going to be that to find that one Walgreens in East Texas? Oh no. <laughs> Every building looks the same. <sighs> yeah, we'll have to search. Once we get back to uh once we get back to Julius, we can maybe look around on the hollow net and see if there's anything specific like that for for the planet. Maybe have something better to go on. Yeah. Okay. She kind of leans back in her chair again and and she's just looking at the um at the map. Um I I assume, Ito, you know, that there's not a lot of information that I can start drawing up on those planets nope. while we're in hyperspace. So she's just trying to work it out herself at the moment. And then and then we're gonna get back and she'll download an atlas. <laughs> S4, do you come over the intercom? No, not yet. I'm waiting patiently. Yeah. Yeah, she forgets. She <laughs> completely forgets to come see you. You, you. you have to come get her. Uh, then I think at some point your, your relaxing moment is broken horribly by S4M saying, Kamaya! <laughs> what is it, S4? I have been waiting patiently for your return. <laughs> It is your turn in the back to tank. I'm I'm not getting in the back to tank. <laughs> it is your turn to have scans run on you. I'm curious to see what cybernetic devices have been implanted in you. <gasps> what? <laughs> ah, that got your attention. <laughs> what are you... You're being real weird, S4. There's gotta be Why a Star Wars equivalent devices? of the pot calling the kettle black. <clears throat> I don't know what it is, but he says the Star Wars, the, the Old Republic equivalent of, that sounds like the pot color the kettle black. <laughs> I feel like we need to come up with this <laughs> with this metaphor before uh, we move. Uh, um, hmm. The uh, hollow projector calling the data pad information giving? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very S4 way yes. to it, too. That's, it, it is an idiom from the Old Republic, but only droids used it. Ah, uh, there you go. Oh, he says something in binary. That's even better. What? Never mind. <laughs> it's the one call in the zero binary. Yes. <laughs> that's the one. Yeah, that's the one call in the zero binary. I like that one. We'll go with that one. <laughs> that's the one call in the zero binary, Kamaya. What? Exactly. Please report to the medical bay as soon as possible. Mm, it's patient, I can tell patiently waiting she she hangs up <laughs> yeah she'll uh she'll like Stroll. you know when you, you you know when you try to call a cat to come over and do something and they wait a minute and then they come just to just to make sure you knew that it's just because they wanted to come not because you asked them surprise to. come on as a cat come on as a cat that's what, that's what you're gonna um, find out in your bio scan <laughs> so so she waits yes. a minute, it turns and, then she'll, been a and then she'll come time. over. She is favoring her like her right foot a little bit. As you pass through the main uh, the main room, you do see the two constructor droids like sitting there at the uh, sabak table, um, with with uh, imp like sitting on one of their shoulders. Just you mean like, the Dajaric the Dajaric table. table, the Dajaric table. Because the sabak is the card game, yeah. and he's like he's pecking at the the flashing yellow light on top of its head. <laughs> That's just imp. They're just not learning quick enough. <laughs> Master strategist of the team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she'll come in. Ah, there you are, Kamaya. 
Yep, I'm here. Let's get started. <laughs> Please sit in this chair. Yeah, she goes to sit down. How are you feeling today? Any headaches? No, not in a while. Cough for me? <laughs> Again? Why? Please indulge me. <laughs> she she does. She's... He, he places huh. a, 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 a fingertip, like a freezing cold fingertip, because, you know, it's still a doctor, mm. <laughs> on, on the front he's of also your chest. Metal. Yeah. Yes. And instead of the stethoscope, he just touches yeah. it with his finger. Again? <laughs> and he puts it on your back. Once more. <laughs> well, that'll have to come out. What? <laughs> Nothing. He, he pushed the finger too hard. <laughs> we need a claw hammer now. Yeah. All right, give me a average with a blue die. Medical. Uh, in addition to the blue die I have from the diagnostic software. Yes. All the blue dice. No black dice. No black. Uh, no. Three successes and wow. five advantages. So. Uh, without Science. without jumping into the bacta, you can heal two wounds. Wait, was that a medical? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that was medicine. I think you get a wound per success. Oh, is it, okay. Then you get three. Well, I mean, you typically just roll medicine, though. I mean, I don't know. Oh, there's and there's, I think there's extra the advantages stuff. you can re- recover strain. There's extra stuff. Uh, you guys finish the scenes. So you guys should be fine on strain now. The, the the arc. <clears throat> so you're giving her scan, isn't <clears throat> it? And you um. And she sneezes. <laughs> she has has S four examined the scar on your chest before. I don't think so. S four, you see that she has this um scar, self cauterized scar. Uh, no, it was a oh. it was a energy. It was, it was necrotic. It was necrotic. Oh, I thought blast. it was the lightsaber. Okay, <laughs> no. Necrotic damage. Uh, Lightsaber, I would have recognized immediately. So she, in in the middle of her chest, she has a scar about the size of a person's hand. Um, And you've seen this kind of scarring before. It looks like force energy attack. Mm -hmm. Not, not, Not force lightning, but just a force energy attack. Uh, you notice that the at the edges of it, where it's the middle of it, looks almost like baby skin, and at the mm-hmm. edge of it, it looks like it actually looks like it's still, um, still damaged. Like the skin there is still damaged, and it should have been replaced by now. Um, would I be able to fix this? No, the for no. your understanding of this kind of scarring is that. Uh, it it actually kind of attaches like that kind of wound isn't just skin deep. Hmm. You do know that it can actually like lingering effects of that attack can actually cause some psychological distress. Aside from a Sith Lord hitting you with it, you know, you've you've done you've done double blind studies. In addition to just getting hit by... <laughs> I had access to the double blind study. Yeah, yeah. You put a Sith Lord in a jar with the cotton ball of alcohol and it goes to sleep and then you... Yeah. <laughs> You're able to dissect it. <laughs> oh, uh, she doesn't seem to have... The Academy. Yeah. She doesn't seem to have any cybernetics. So. Yes. <laughs> Although those were the advantages. <laughs> although you 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 while you're doing it all, you are able to do some measurements, you know, like some computations in your head. Oh, the, I know where to put them now. Yeah, yeah, I mean you you have that one. Oh, I mean Two. we have the cybernetic hand, and we have the oh god, yeah, you have three plant, and yeah, you have an eye, a hand, and the um, data port. The data port, yeah. Brainstem data port. Yeah, you do the uh, math. Yeah, you think she could take. Uh, what's your What's your brawn? Two. She can take two of those. Come on, yo. 
What? Does this still hurt? And I tap the, the force wound. Does it still oh, hurt? Oh, oh, yeah. Actually, more than you remember it hurting. More like before this mission, it was mostly like kind of annoying and itchy. And when yeah. you slept, you would roll over and it would ache. Now that he's brought attention to it, it actually throbs. Yeah, as as he touches it, she flinches back. Ah, yeah, don't do that. Kamaya. What? What attacked you? <sighs> Dirty and Thask attacked me. And that's what I thought. I can't fix this, Kamaya. This isn't something medical science can repair. However, I can give you something for the pain. <laughs> she was kind of looking down as she said who attacked her, and when he said it can't fix this, she kind of looked up at him and was just kind of looking at him for a sec. Um, so he'll swivel, just... he'll reach out with his hand while still looking at you and, and, and like give you drugs. <laughs> we can manage the pain. Um... I think I might be able to get it back down to a dull itch if it's hurting you. Oh, but your ability to pilot will be hampered while you're on medication. Um, I assume, did you give her just, like, pills or something? Yes. Yeah, so I just handed, and handed her, like, a hypo spray thing. She, um, she just looks at it for a second, and, like, when you see the pilot thing... She stares at it, and then she just puts it down. It's fine. No, it is not fine, Kamaya. This is a very serious wound. I'm surprised you did not bring this to my attention before. Actually, I... recalculating. No, I understand why you did not bring this to my attention before. Would you like to spend some time in the Bacta tank? You may feel better. Would that fix it? No. But you also have a sprain point? in your right leg. Or was it the left leg? <laughs> it was the right leg. It was the right leg? Okay, good. Yeah. I'm paying attention, I swear. <laughs> S4M would know. <laughs> you also have a but... sprain in your right leg, some bruising, and... Well... Your body has been, uh... Taxed. Let's say. I mean, yeah, I'm tired. Yes. Oh. I'll I could put you to fine. sleep and put you in the back of the tank for a few hours. You'll probably feel a lot better. Um. But this, and she kind of like points at her the wounds in her chest. Yes. The are wound you, goes. Are beyond... you saying it won't heal? No, it will not. It probably will never completely heal. That's unfortunately the intent of the attack. It goes beyond damaging your cellular structure. It is... It goes beyond my knowledge of the Force, I'm afraid, but it has permanently injured your form... I think is how my master would describe it. My form? Yes. Your living embodiment. Okay. Um, so, if the force hurt it, can the force heal it? Uh, that is a possibility, but I know of no one capable of doing such things. Not anymore. Okay. Yeah. Um, I am more concerned, however, because of the potential mental strain that this wound will place on you. How do you feel about it? Um, I don't like it. What do you? What do you mean? Rephrase. How does this wound make you feel about yourself? 
Um, I don't like having a scar. We could cover the scar. Okay, that'd be better. Uh, it would um, not heal the wound, though. It would be purely superficial. I guess I'll have to take what I can get. Uh, I personally don't understand why the scar bothers you, but that may be because I'm a droid. Sounds accurate. Yes. Uh, <sighs> one moment. Does this wound leave you with self-doubt? Uh, you're getting all, like, psychologist on me again. Those are the diagnostics that I have pulled up. Yes, Kamaya. Yeah. I'm going through the list. weird. It doesn't... No, it doesn't fill me with self-doubt. Does it evoke in you a desire for revenge? Ooh. Um... Against the bastard who sh- who hurt me? Yeah. Sorry, can I say bastard? Oh. Apparently. Sure. <laughs> I don't know I don't know what <laughs> at what point we yeah, draw the ba- line. Bastard. I'm gonna say bastard's fine. Yeah. What against the bastard who hurt me? Yeah. I see. That's a normal reaction, S4. Recalculate. <laughs> what is your favorite color? Is it red? Oh no. <laughs> <clears throat> He's gonna diagnose me with uh, dark side itis. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh no. There's only one. She's cure been for infected dark with dark side. <laughs> Quick, we need it. We need. We need a dozen younglings stat. <laughs> Oh, no. Now I want you to take this lightsaber and not kill the ball. <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> Dang it. Okay. Not again. All right. So oh. you, <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna pop you into I the. Said don't kill the ball. <laughs> they're, gonna, they're gonna pop you into the back there, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna so ask her a few more questions though, if you wouldn't mind. Oh sure. Kamaya, the visions you saw that were projected by what was left of, I think, a Jedi. What did you see? Does it matter? I believe it does. I saw what he wanted me to see. Which was? He he was trying to get us to get him out. You saw indications of how to get him out? If you were able to see, S4M is literally going down a checklist of psychological <laughs> question profiling, and he's skipping down to if they become, in, you know, in transit, in transit, ah, they become uh, unwilling to continue talking, go to this line. <laughs> <laughs> he's following a flowchart. Yeah, he's following a flowchart. This, is, this is not what he's programmed to do. At so. the top, it's Cosmo's Guide to Are You a Sith? <laughs> no. No, that's not what he's saying. <laughs> Let's get you into the tank. Let me give you some sedatives, and we'll have you feeling at least physically better in the next few hours. Thanks for listening. To make sure you don't miss any big updates, follow us on Facebook at No Match for a Blaster, or on Twitter at Morality underscore Plays. If you enjoyed our show, please leave us a review on iTunes, and visit our Patreon on patreon.com slash moralityplays. No Match for a Blaster is a podcast by Morality Plays. Star Wars, Edge of the Empire, Age of Rebellion, and Force and Destiny are made by Fantasy Flight Games and Lucas Books. Our theme is by Kevin McLeod. Sound effects by Tristan Longren, Vedas, and Akmov. I'd like to thank our awesome GM, Ito, as well as our other players, Brandon, playing Remy Drobash, and Gerald, playing S4M-3L. And, of course, I'd like to thank you, our listeners. We'll see you again soon in a galaxy far, far away.